This is a standard woolly bugger. We're tying it on a 3x long streamer type hook, starting the thread base about two eye, turn, eye widths back from the hook eye, wrapping to the end of the shank. Remember that's the straight part, turns into the curved part, usually lines right up with the throat of the barb. Anyway, we'll wrap forward almost to our starting point. Not quite, but almost. We're going to stop a little bit short, and that's because we're going to be tying on marabou for a tail. And uh, because of the dimension of the marabou, we need to get rid of some of this. It's just too thick. It makes way too big of a body on the fly. There we go. That's a little bit better. And we want the tail to be about equal to the length of the hook shank. We'll tie this on, and you'll see why we left those two thread turns short of the tie-in point here in just a moment. I'm going to wrap forward. Now when I trim this off, the dimension, the width of the, of the material actually lets uh, the trimmed fibers lay right on top of the right on top of the place where I started the thread keeps the, the materials from creeping forward on the hook had I not done that I would have had a problem with with the uh, material creeping forward and blocking out the eye of the hook now I'm going to anchor the wire on the bottom of the hook and just leave it right there for the moment. Wrap back forward to the starting point. Our body material is going to be chenille. I probably should have left that at the back. Let me wrap it back there. Because chenille has a way of really building up bulk on a fly. And what we're going to do is use our fingernail to strip off the end of that. So the only thing that's left is the thread core. And that gets the uh, bulk of the body down considerably. We'll just kind of anchor that in place. Like you see here. Before I wrap the body, I want to deviate just a small amount from what was done in the book in that I'm going to attach the hackle at the front before I wrap the body. And just for me, it works easier. You can follow whichever one works best for you. I just like to already to do it that way it seems to work better for me everybody to their own thing but anyway notice that I take a couple of wraps in front just to get it heading in the direction that I want it to go now let's wrap the body starting at the back making each subsequent turn tight tight to the one before it. All right, now I am going to trim off. Now notice that I take this finger right here and I'm going to hold right there while I trim off the waist. And we're going to also strip away back to the threads just like we did on the back. And that's a little bit harder to control, so I will bring a hackle pliers into the mix and bring that around one more turn and anchor it in place. And the only thing I'm tying off now is the thread core, not the body itself of the, of the chenille. Now let's get the, get the rib ready to, to wrap, and let's uh, grab the hackle, and we'll start making our turns. Making a turn or two right in front, and then palmering, whoops, let me back up a little bit here. I've got a turn or two too many, here we go. There we go. And 
and it ends up right at the back. We'll tie that off with the rib as we wrap forward. We'll deal with that little stub of hackle here in just a moment. But for right now, we're just going to wrap the rib forward, and the rib's purpose is to bind that hackle in place so it does not come loose. It can get chewed up pretty bad and still hold together. It's one of the good things about tying the, the hackle that way. And you'll also notice if you have a hackle that's shaped somewhat like a Christmas tree where it's bigger down towards the base and, and smaller towards the tip, it will also look good on this fly that way. Now let's get our whip finish tool, bring it into play, finish off with a whip finish. Get our glue. And the last thing we're going to do now that the glue is done is we'll trim off the waste end here of the feather. And there you've got a completed woolly burger.